I'm Jan Bosman. I'm a lot of things. I'm a, I'm a cook. I'm a kitchen genealogist, somebody said, because uh, when I was teaching and I was working and I was a homemaker, um, every night I had to come home and figure out some meal to put on the table. And so I never designed a meal myself. I mean, I never designed a recipe myself. Everything I cooked, I had gotten the recipe from somebody else, from my mother, from my mother-in-law, from my sister, and so forth. You know, I write, and so people say, well, where did you get the idea to write that? And I, I think it's just called life, to be honest with you. So when I had the idea for the memories of family, friends, and food, I'm not sure the moment when I knew that I wanted to save old recipes in acid-free pages and write about the stories behind them. I'm not sure of that moment, but I do know that I was working at Turning Point and I said to my office mate, you know, Cheryl, someday I want to create a book where I can save these recipes from my friends and my family and talk about it. And she said, well, then do it. You know, if, if this is haunting you, then you have to do it. It is not a recipe book. It is not a cookbook. It is a place where you, once you've decided that your story is, is unique and important to save, where you tell your story. I've been a lot of places in Wisconsin and in Illinois giving talks about this. And I guess the best part of it is that everybody has a story. Everybody has a lot of stories. Some people will just say, I can't write. But if you, if I engage them, tell me your story, they can tell it beautifully. And if you can tell it beautifully, you can indeed write it. I include with the book uh, five steps for uh, beginning the book. And in no way do I believe there's one best way to do it. But a person does have to start somewhere. So I believe you have to start by doing an archaeological dig in your recipe box or in your recipe folder where you might have great grandmas, a pinch of this, uh, uh, a shaker of that, uh, half a handful or something. And you start there and you go, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I sat down with grandma and, and, and we did this. And so you start by finding a prompt, you find a recipe. So you have to find some recipes that mean something to you, that have a story. And then you have to be willing to tell a story. And here's the thing, it's your story. Nobody knows. Now, I write, and I write sometimes what I call faction. You know, it's based on facts, but I can embellish if I want to. So when you tell your story, if you have siblings and they go back and they read it, they'll go, I don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they don't have to remember. This is your story. This is how you remember it, and you tell it. The journal pages are lined. There are pocket pages for the recipes to be tucked in. And so then you just write, and if you make a mistake, you just like scratch it out and you go on. My mother's recipes first, because that's my culture of birth. Then I go to my culture of choice, Walworth, where my husband and I lived uh, early on. And then I have stuff from his mother, stuff from my sister, recipes from my sister, my neighbors, a few. Some people just do one person. They just, like, they get out their mother's recipes, their mother's now passed, and they do that. Stephen King wrote in a compilation of his short stories uh, this, this uh, short story called The Body. And so I thought people were really hesitant to tell their food stories because they were too close to their heart somehow. I don't know. So I used to read this. The most important things are the hardest things to say. 
They are the things you get ashamed of because words diminish them. Words shrink things that seem limitless when they were in your head to no more than living size when they're brought out. But it's more than that, isn't it? The most important things lie too close to wherever your secret heart is buried, like landmarks to a treasure your enemies would love to steal away. And you may make revelations that cost you dearly, only to have people look at you in a funny way, not understanding what you've said at all, or why you thought it was so important that you almost cried when you were saying it. That's the worst, I think, when the secret stays locked within, not for want of a teller, but for want of an understanding ear. So I always thought that that was the thing, you know. People were like, my story, if I tell it, well, people think it's, well, who cares about that? So it's about your caring about it because it's, it's your heritage and your stories. I've been told that women, when asked to share recipes, and women do it all the time, but in the old days, let's just say in the old days, uh, let's say grandma made a to die for apple pie, and everybody would go, oh, can we have your recipe? And, and that women and grandma would write out the recipe, <clears throat> but they would omit a quantity or, a, or an item so that the result, when the next person made it, would be different from the delicious item that had been tasted. And it was sort of a subterfuge kind of thing. It was kind of like, I, I don't want to believe it, but I guess I, I've always thought that maybe women, that was their identity then. At the fair, the best, the blue ribbon pie, the blue ribbon cookies, the whatever. And so since their identity was so tied up in it that they just couldn't let that go. I want to say to you, if you're going to pass on recipes, handwrite them. Handwrite them cause, and date them. My mother dated her recipes. And so I look back and it says chicken casserole for Janice, 1972. I have her handwriting. I have her the date, and often it's written on the back of a card that identifies an insurance company that my dad worked for or something. All of that is so precious, but especially your handwriting. I say if you handwrite your recipes and you give them to your friends, you live forever. I will pass one of the memories books on to each of my seven grandchildren. In that book, I will write a story and give them a recipe that I know they like. I will tell, I will maybe put a picture of us eating a Thanksgiving dinner where there is something that I know they like especially. And then, then it will be their story to tell. I all I know is that in families that value hmm, the warmth of being together and, and sharing a meal, um, there will always be recipes that people will want passed on. Um, I, I believe that every family has its myths also. And my husband, to whom I was married for 49 years before he died, I think he thought this was funny. I'm not sure if I was always laughing, but he would tell to anybody who would listen the story of how he married me because I made stuffed peppers better than his mom. And I've argued that we married each other for the same reasons that most people do, which is uh, hormones and expectations or something like that. But as a result of that, I, I, I made stuffed peppers for him for years and years and years. And in my book, I have the stuffed pepper recipe next to a picture of him. I'm sure you have special recipes from special people 
whom you would like to honor in a book of your own. That's why this book is both a recipe book and a journal that records memories and honors the givers. You can make it a historical record to pass down through the generations or simply a revisiting of the journey you have already taken. Whatever you make of yours, I hope you enjoy the results as much as I've enjoyed creating the format.